There you go. Okay, Merry Christmas. I just gave, this is try number three because I kept being too enthusiastic because I got people here who don't love Christmas as much as me, apparently. So I'm getting mocked. I'm Dave Butler, everybody. I'm Stefan Tager. Welcome to the Revival Podcast. We're, I was looking at when this comes out. This is going to be a week. Is it a, well, hold on. Uh, yeah, a week before Christmas ish. Something. Yeah. It's near Christmas. It's just the Christmas time of year. It's yeah. the most beautiful time of the year. That's what I thought of when I just said that. <laughs> It's an important part of people's lives, you know? It just is the, it's the heartbeat of, I think, families and nations and it's people's faith. So we love talking about that. We love being men of faith and people of faith and um, talking about things, what that might look like. Today is so thrilling. Tithing. <laughs> it just kind of sounds like wah, connect it. wah, 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 right? <laughs> we, sort of what we, just, we just did tithing declaration, and so now we're doing a tithing. Oh, yeah, true, true. Here we are. And, okay, I want to say this. I want to say this about this talk because this time of year you have, like, there's a lot of different causes to donate your money to. And there's a lot of different, you know, charities. And you got Santa Claus outside, Macy's, ringing his bell. And, you know, <laughs> I love that guy, by the way. It's like, I give my money to him every time because I just think it's so cute. It's awesome. He's <laughs> <laughs> just there ringing the bell, you know? And I'm like, oh, I think this is so cool. But there's something, money's funny, man. Money is like. That's it, the it title. Makes, yeah. Money is funny. Money is, <laughs> yeah, because it, it is, you know, it's super important <laughs> to us. And. Especially this time of year when people are trying to think about what where they want their money to go, they're they want it to go to a legitimate cause. People get really uh, worked up and funny about their money, and I'm not trying to rhyme. <laughs> it's trying to copy me. <laughs> no, I've ruined it. I remember on my mission, I heard this state president say, "I know so many problems and relationships that could be solved by people simply saying three words: keep the money." I mean, think about how people get really... He could have been more clever about that line. I thought it was going to be this great line. Keep, the, what do you mean? Keep, <laughs> keep saying, like People money. are like, borrow money or whatever. You know what I mean? And so it's like, hey, whatever. Just keep it. And it's, I, in fact, I knew, I knew someone who said, I will only lend people money if they promise me that they won't try to pay me back. That huh. was his rule for it. Because huh. huh. people, people try to get really, I mean, they get really worked up when it comes to their finances. And understandably so. Yeah. They work hard and they want to provide a good life for their family and for themselves. And people don't want to be duped by right. where their money goes, yeah. right? So like a certain charity or – and there's just so many stories of, of that kind of thing, you know, of people who have scams and, and all right. sorts of stuff. And this is only this much percentage of this – all this is going to overhead and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And, and people genuinely, especially this time of year, they want their money to matter. And you know what's interesting? This is interesting. And I, we'll you, find out. You, well, <laughs> <laughs> there's something about tithing and fast offerings to me that it feels a little blah in some sense because it's going into this big central fund, right? Mm. And I don't see necessarily like the people it helps versus if I donate to some local cause, which there's nothing preventing me from doing all the above. Right. I, yeah, I can. I can. But I think there is something about tithing that feels really mechanical and and really like organizational to it because yeah. it's like I pay it online, I click click the box, and then it's just gone. And it feels like there was I have no person to person, you know, connection to it necessarily. I think there is something about you know, I put money in the bell ringers. You know, yeah. I actually don't know where that's going. <laughs> At least I'm like hearing right. a clank or something when it goes in there. But we're we're kind of saying this. We're, let's let's catch you up on kind of the conversation we were having before we started. That this talk came just right after there were all those news articles about pointing the finger at the church and whistleblowing business about um, how much money there was and was it being used inappropriately. And and I think it got a lot of us in uh you in in that place of oh, wait 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 a second. You know, and, and there's two sides to it. You could really quickly go to now that, you know, don't worry about that. And, but I, you know, I think there's something safe and good about organizations that have checkpoints and, and checks. And as somebody who's like paying money into that tithing, I, I, you know, there's part of me that's like, wait, is it being, how is it being used? Yeah. And, 
I don't think it's bad that people like qu- like question like thought for a minute when they saw some of those articles. I'm like, okay, hold, on. yeah, is it is the money going? Where is the money going? And um, yeah, I mean, there's a clearly like a way to frame it where people are just trying to find stuff to attack the church, right? Sure. And sure. then there's also uh, faithful Latter Day Saints who are saying, yeah, I'd like to know, you know, about the processes and the principles behind how tithing is used. Just because they're smart people who want to improve the organization. Sure. I think, yeah. right? There's some people who are just like, oh, are there, you know, better ways to do this and let people know? and Or at least just wonder, what are the practices? What are the principles? And so Elder Anderson gives us this talk, and it's called Opening the Windows of Heaven. And he's going to address that. He's going to talk about those things head on. He starts off towards the beginning with this doctrinal foundation. And this is important because as Christians, we don't take... um the world story to the church. We we start off with God's story and then bring that to the world. Huh. And so, in fact, there's a whole movement. I study homiletics. That's what my research is. That's the study of preaching. <laughs> 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 and there's a whole movement in preaching that says um, preachers get off course when they're trying to make the gospel fit into the world rather than getting the world to conform to the gospel, mm. right? And so he starts off like this. He says, all that we have and all that we are comes from God. As disciples of Christ, we willingly share with those around us. So those two f- doctrinal foundational points, it's like, oh yeah, that's cute. I've heard that since I was in primary. It's like, mm, that's actually hugely doctrinally foundational here. Yeah. Like, everything I have in the first place comes from God. Yeah, right? yeah like, that I is a premise you'd have to begin with. Right. You have to like, if someone were to say, hey, talk to me about your church's, you know, financial stories and all these things that I'm that I'm hearing. You're like, okay, we can't actually compare it to eBay or another right. charity or anything like that. We would actually have to begin with the premise of we believe that all that we have and all that we are comes from God. Right. And then we have a we responsibility. Have, that's step one. We have yes. to start there. Right. Yes. And then he says this, which is, I think, so important in this discussion. He says, the Apostle Paul warned that the wisdom of men understands the things of men, but has difficulty understanding the things of God. The world speaks of tithing in terms of our money, Mm -hmm. but the sacred law of tithing is principally a matter of our faith. Being honest in our tithes is one way we show our willingness to put the Lord first in our lives above our own cares and interests. I promise you that as you trust in the Lord, the blessings of heaven will follow. I know what that sounds like to critics and uh, what people are going to say about that, but we actually believe this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> like, we actually believe in God and that he has a restored church and he has this eternal principle of tithing that goes back all the way to Malachi. Right. Right. And so. When and you, before. And before that. And right. it's like, people are like, yeah, that doesn't make sense. And I'm like, I know, I know this is the things of God. And we're, we're starting from a completely different premise. And, and, and let me just say this real no, fast. No, 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 yeah, yeah, And someone yeah. might say, like, well, how do you know your premise is right? And I say, I have two friends with name tags. They want to come over and they would love to have that discussion <laughs> with you, right? And so we, once we get that out of the way, like, oh, yeah, we we work from this premise that the church is true, right? Yeah, and we work from uh, through a lens of of faith. Like, I don't approach the the topic of tithing as an accountant. Yeah. Like, I approach it as a as a as a recipient. And a believer in that all that I have and all that I have been given is is from God and and that God has a potential for me. That there's a purpose to me being here, and that there's purpose to every single one of his laws, also, that they're not arbitrary. That he's like, I have in mind to mold you into something more than you are. Yeah. And so from the beginning of time, and it seems as if. Money has been important to people since the beginning of time too. So it's like clearly God's going to speak on the topic of money because it's so like tied into your desires and it's tied into, you know, your, your, just so much of your nature is revealed and impacted, I think both by money. Yeah. And so sure, it is certain that God would have something to To say say about about that. that and to like, I don't know, curb some of the, what, where I can so easily go. Like if I'm honest with myself about it, I could say, oh, I can see how the love of money could take over me. Like that is clear as day. If I take two minutes examining my heart, it's like, oh, and I can see a protective part of this law that he doesn't necessarily address in this talk, but I think is important to say that there's like, Oh, well, there's actually something very protective 
um, about this yeah. in, in, you know, in pain tithing. So a preacher that you and me both like, Tim Keller. Um, he, well, I love him. He's, he's the best. <laughs> you can like him. <laughs> he, uh, he was a preacher in Manhattan. And he said uh, once, I've had all kinds of people confess all kinds of sins to me over the years. And he said, the one sin that no one has ever confessed to me was the sin of being greedy. Mm. And there's something about Western culture, Europe, America, blah, 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 where we've really come to like sort of be okay with a rampant materialism. Like it's okay to really just love stuff and experiences. And yeah, blah, you just blah, have to paint as ambition. Right. Yeah, or you just, <laughs> we just find ways, right? And, or uh, I should say this. I really should say this so that people are like, ah! <laughs> but they are so closely connected that ambition can quickly yeah. – you know, move into greed and materialism. It just can't. It just can't. Yeah. I know that. It's, it's I, not my a, own experience. It's not a sin to be wealthy. That's clear from Scripture. But Jesus says also very clearly that it is tricky. It is a dangerous thing, right? You have to know how to handle that. And I think tithing is one of the ways that, you know, the Lord handles it with us. Okay, so let's get into Protective. The, Again, it's comes protect, back to that right, idea yeah. of protection. So let's get into it's like So, okay, so how is our money used? Like, where does it go? Well, like, before you go there, I want to say this about it too, because there was one other thing that I thought about it. So there was that protective nature of it, but that paragraph that you read where he says, the sacred law of tithing is principally, I, and, and I'm just actually seeing that he called it a sacred law. That's actually really intriguing to me right now. Um, but uh, he, almost because he says, you've degraded this to talk about dollars and cents. Right. <laughs> but this is actually a matter of the heart and yeah. soul. And he says this, it's, um, it's principally a matter of our faith. And I, when I came home um, from my mission, the, my, uh, my good friend's dad was um, working with Elder Perry at the time. And he had mentioned to him while they were working together about his son coming home and this group of his buddies all living together, home from their missions. And he gave us some advice, you know, via my friend's dad and just t said all of them, if I could give you one piece of advice to set the course of your heart and your life, it would be to pay your tithing. Hmm. And I did not expect that to be what he was going to say. But since then, I've thought and let, like, as I've sunk into that living that law of tithing and wondering, because I have a why spirit, I'm always wondering, like, why are we doing this? I've seen, I think, some of the fruits of what he was was trying to teach us. Yeah. That idea, like, I don't care about money, but I do care about faith. And I do care about generosity. And I do care about living whatever the opposite of materialism is. And there's something about that giving away of it that really does impact. It affects all of those yeah. things. It's, it's There's a... There is a trust in, I don't know. It's yeah. like, it's rich. It's a really, really rich law. And I think probably because I love money so much, you know, <laughs> that it's just like, God's like, I know, I know. So like, let's, I can, I can really get into the, right. like, like I can massage the deep parts of your heart. I love that. And it's funny that you say that because in our culture, Latter-day Saint culture, you can joke around about being prideful. You can joke around about being impatient. But it would not be socially acceptable to say like, yeah, sometimes I'm greedy. And every single human is. Yeah. Every single person <laughs> is. And so the first step is to confess that and say, yeah, sometimes I just love stuff. Yeah. Right? And I love money and like, and I want whatever it is. Dude, and paying tithing is sort of like a confession of it. Right. Like it feels like a, you know. Change my heart. M make this not as important. But it, me, right? it, it pierces it, you know, to like <laughs> hand it away. It's like. Yeah. It's, yeah. There's something that like changes in me with it. Okay, so how how is it used? This is what Elder Anderson says. He says, which is the be this is the best part, I think. Well, I'm I think I'm going to read a different part than what. Oh, okay, fine. Think. Okay, he says this, but my here's the <laughs> second best part. <laughs> he says he says he directed that the use of these sacred ties would be prayerfully considered by a council of the first presidency, the quorum of the twelve apostles, the presiding bishopric, and quote by mine own voice unto them, saith the Lord. People want to talk about like the programs and policies behind tithing. I want to talk about the people. Mm. Do you trust President Nelson, Russell M. Nelson, Henry B. Eyring, uh, Dallin H. Oaks with your money? Like 100%. Right. Not, in fact, I wish they would come to my house and do my personal budget for me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, 
Professor Irene went they to Harvard. Good. Yeah. They don't go. <laughs> he's, he's a DBA from Harvard. And, yeah. uh, and, that, and I'm joking. That's not the reason why. But I, I trust the leaders of the church 100%. And I, I do not worry that they're uh, using our funds inappropriately. I, his line when he says this, where he says, we, th- um, talks about we're answerable to the Lord who will require an accounting at our hands. And he says, we deeply feel the weight of being answerable. I'm so glad that I never have to. To the Lord. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I felt like a, a sense, a tiny sense of that when I was a bishop, hmm. where I felt like, you know, answerable to the Lord for how the money was being used. But, but like, man, it just feels like, it's, that's yeah. intense. And there are safeguards in there too, which I think is worth bringing up also to say that all 15 of them under the united inspiration of the Lord right, make decisions. And there's audits and there's checks. And, and we, we know all that. He says, from the generous tithes and offerings you have consecrated to the Lord, last year more than a billion U.S. dollars were used to bless those in need. I think I think one would die before they could count to a billion if you did one dollar for every second. <laughs> like you, you don't even have that many seconds in your life, right? He continues. He says there are seventy one thousand missionaries, temples. Currently, one hundred and seventy seven temples are in operation. Fifty nine are under construction. There are more than thirty thousand congregations. And I and I just want to pause you and say, like, it's this is great to like go over like the statistics of it, but to picture. Again, the people you just said policies and programs, but I, I'm interested in the people, and I'm and I'm interested in the people for this. I don't care. Well, I do, but about 177 temples in operation, but I do care about this one particular temple that I can see in my mind and the people who are walking in through the door as a safe haven from whatever it is that they're dealing with. Like this, this talk started with a story and he used that phrase, chaos and anarchy reigned in the streets. Mm. And that happens in individual lives and in communities and in countries. And to know that there is a temple within reach where a person can go and sit in a place of protection and a place of promise. I want to say to give that gift to someone else in this world, take 50%. Like that, to picture a person walking in to a celestial room to sit and pour out their heart to God and look for answers and, and help and strength. Like I'm like, take it, have it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and then you do the same with every, with three, 30,000 chapels. Yeah. I remember my, my brother talking about this, chapel that's in this city in Paraguay and and it being all these houses on this row and there being this chapel at the end of the row and on Sunday morning watching people pile out of their houses and walk down the street to the chapel. I just remember him coming home and painting that picture and, and just thinking, I'd I'd build that, I'd pay for that chapel to yeah. let those people gather, you know, in prayer and worship together. And I don't, you know, you just yeah. you hear the statistics, but then like I love how you said you come back to the people and it's like that's what that's what this is about. Yeah. Yeah. He says the church currently sponsors five institutions of higher learning. You think about Seven. <laughs> <laughs> You think about just um it's your job. The the church uh programs and temples and schools and those those are uh, the source of endless blessings in our lives. And so of course I'm so thankful that the Lord can take our funds. And because we put it into sort of this larger account, you know, there but are so much can, more can be done. Yeah, and there can be wise business practices that are done. And I'm totally, and the, you know, we don't know much of the details behind that. And, but I'm like totally okay with whatever decisions are made to take the Lord's money and, and use it in ways I can continue to bless more and more. Yeah. You know? I, I think. When I said at the beginning, talking about that idea, I was like, oh, you kind of want to see who are the faces of yeah. the people that this is impacting. And I, I want to know where my money goes and, and that kind of thing. And it's like, yeah, that's nice on a smaller scale. But what you can do on a bigger scale by putting it into this, what I call like a nameless fund or whatever, <laughs> like the impact that it can have and the money that it can generate to do even more and more good. And I know there's people 
who are thinking, I know, but a billion dollars compared to however much the news said, <laughs> right. you know, the church had. And I, and I just want to say like, I, 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 okay, but I've lived enough years to know that the Lord has taught me, I have something in store for you and it's not quite yet. And I'm actually choosing to believe in a way and live in a way where it's like, why aren't we just giving away all that money right now? And it's like, well, because I actually think God has something in store. Because yeah. I think there is something he has purpose and right. you know for all of this to come. Well, a lot of people are like, well, I, they've heard reports that there's this big store, yeah. right? Yeah. And so, and we don't. What are the details? Who, who we don't even know. It's just people saying things about that, right? But I agree. It's like, it's sort of like I don't know what that's for, you know. But I trust that somehow the Lord will use that when He inspires His servants to to do that, and we'll we'll cross that bridge yeah and i've know? seen good already come from it right. so i know that there's i have evidence of it but at the same time because that's not my job right now i'm focusing on the impact that handing that money over is having on me mm-hmm. and the impact it's having you know, on my heart and my desires and yep. and who i'm becoming as a as a person and so i love seeing both benefits of that at the same time like oh i'm making a difference in the world with it you know someone is someone smarter to be <laughs> is you know so and someone more inspired or whatever yeah and then also at the same time i'm seeing on a personal level what's happening with just honoring and obeying the law that god gave in connection with that he he tells a story with Elder Henry B. Irene in 1998, he says he goes to a meeting in the Utah area, now known as the Silicon Slopes. And he says, President Irene, in this meeting to church members, I made a promise to the members of the church. And I just love this with all my heart. He says, I will also remember his promise that as they paid an honest tithe, their desire for more more material possessions would diminish. Mm. And we live in a culture right now that even that promise that you would want less material possessions seems scary. Mm-hmm. You're like, wait a minute, but I like my stuff. And I yeah. want, right. And, but it is deeply freeing to not have that anymore, you know, to become a, an appropriate minimalist in that sense. Right. And to say like, I'm, I'm set free of that. I was once having a lunch, sort of an interfaith lunch um, with a, a leader of a, well, I don't know if he's a leader, he's a scholar of another faith and he's actually a CS Lewis scholar. And he's radically giving. And sort of in passing, I learned that he, a student will come into his office and will say like, hey, I like that book. And he'll be like, oh, you can have it or whatever it is. He's just mm. a very, very giving person. And he said this line and, uh, you know, it's, I'm sure it comes from an, another place, but he says, I've just learned, it was something like this. I can't remember exactly, but uh, whatever I can't give away, you know, owns me, right? Mm. And, and so he's learned how to be emotionally free of all his stuff by giving away things freely. And that's what tithing does. It works upon our heart. I want to say this. If there's a part of my heart that's now set free from loving money or things, it means it's set free to love something else. and uh, Or probably more importantly, someone else. There's more of my heart to love God. There's more of my heart to love um, other people. He ends the whole talk with a section that he calls God's important work. And at the very base what this law is actually all about is taking care of each other. It's about our hearts, like you said, our hearts drawn out to God and understanding and living in that gratitude and as recipients of his goodness, but also to take care of other people. Like God's most important work is people, mm. my work and my glory. And I will, the different ways that he'll bring it about, but it's, it's, it's that. And if pain tithing is one way to take care of others, to give more people to Jesus. We were talking earlier today, that story of those friends that carry their their buddy to Jesus, you know? And it's like, someone had to come up with a bed and it's like all the work that went into taking that guy to Jesus. I'm just like, oh, if my money can do that for other people, if it can provide the beds to carry people to Jesus, then have it. Yeah. Because that's what it's for. Yeah, because he gave up his throne on high and died for us and was born in, in a feeding trough and lived that simple, uh, humble life that the Savior lived and then went to a cross. And through that, we get the riches of eternity. <laughs> and so, of course, of course, we'll give back. Yeah. You it's, know? it's crazy. The Jesus, the life of Jesus is evidence that it's by giving something up that everybody gains something more. Mm. It's the opposite of what our minds think, but it's, it's the way he lived. And it's a beautiful way. That's revival right there. All right. Amen. See you all next week.